Hello all my subscribers. So uh, as promised here is the spoiler free review of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Wait, something's not right. Why is Judy introducing this video? That isn't right. <laughs> uh, thought I'd play around with the multiverse aspect. Who knows, in the infinite possibilities of the multiverse, there could be a version of my channel where a talking calico hosts the videos of uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and get on discussing the movie. A little something different I thought I'd do. Um, film this uh, spoiler-free discussion with uh, Judy right here. Probably just going to be for just this one. The spoiler-filled one will be normal. But thought I'd do something a little different, spice it up. So yeah, definitely, uh, yet again, another Marvel MCU movie that I've been really excited for. Um, it being directed by Sam Raimi sure didn't hurt. I've always loved his movies, whether it was his early horror movies like the Evil Dead trilogy and or uh, some of his more recent work like um, Drag Me to Hell, which was surprisingly brutal. And um, just glad that he's finally got another chance because I'll admit when Spider-Man 3 came out, I definitely was a victim of the hype. I thought it was going to be an amazing, almost Spider-Man No Way Home-like movie, but I've since now realized that wasn't what it was supposed to be. And also definitely not as bad as I initially thought it would be. But, uh, yeah, anyway, um, overall, uh, just about everything here at this movie works, and gotta say, the reason why this video took a little bit longer to get uploaded was, let's just say Sam Raimi brought his horror edge to Doctor Strange, and not to crap on his Spider-Man movies, but I feel like he's a little bit more, um, more, uh, he's a better fit for Doctor Strange. This horror style works great for Doctor Strange, and... I've noticed some YouTubers say they wanted this to be the first Doctor Strange movie, which, I don't know, I kind of feel like this was the right approach. Slowly introduce us to the character like they did with uh, Scott Derrickson's Doctor Strange, and now Raimi has just went all out with the more magical, mystical horror side of some Doctor Strange comics. Some of the later ones, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, it's not really a spoiler that this movie deals with the multiverse, as it's in the title, so, um... There's uh, some variants of Doctor Strange as they're dealing with a crisis on uh, Wanda Maximoff along with the uh, Darkhold. So here's uh, Doctor Strange and some of his variants, Defender Strange and Sinister Strange. But uh, yeah, um, after that, uh, there's also Wanda Maximoff who also has... Uh, a few variants, as she's also the Scarlet Witch in this movie, so here's her and her variants. And, um, anyway, uh, yeah, this movie also was a nice little, uh, all developed Doctor Strange real nicely, too. Some moments in his arc and a revelation on his backstory I did not see coming. And, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, Definitely, overall, um, what I hope this movie would be and more, why I saw it twice and I needed to, to collect my feelings, because let's just say, wow, Sam Raimi really stretched the boundaries of the PG-13 rating with this movie. There are so many scenes where you could edit it one or two different ways. <laughs> I think this would probably be the first R-rated MCU movie if it was edited one of two ways. But, uh, yeah, anyway, the action's solid as any Sam Raimi movie is. He really used the more magical side of Strange real well, along with Wong. Wong had many moments to shine since he's now the Sorcerer Supreme. And, um, yeah, anyway, here's, uh, Wong, since he's becoming the new Phil Coulson, appearing in every movie. But, yeah, I'm beginning to feel like this movie is a lot like, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home with spoiler, making it spoiler-free kind of best to just go into it, so I guess the only last things I'll say non-spoiler-like, uh, one thing I'll highlight now before I forget is uh, Danny Elfman has worked his magic yet again with uh, frickin' um, Sam Raimi. The musical score is great, along with the way that it's used in the movie that I'll go into detail with in the spoiler-filled review. But uh, yeah, anyway, um, uh, he definitely delivered, and I like the few references to the original theme, which is another great one. 
Because, uh, I gotta say, Michael Giacchino's The Batman, though that movie wasn't the disaster I thought it'd be. His theme for The Batman was just a wannabe Danny Elfman clone. Can't think of a better time to say it in this video when I'm highlighting Danny Elfman, so, yeah. But, uh, overall, definitely a, uh, definitely a highlight of this movie, so I guess that's it for the spoiler-free, so, uh, let me go ahead and get on that other one, so, like, comment, subscribe, peace.